Hi, and welcome to this fourth episode of our series in which we present Agent Force vibes. My name is Philippe Ozil, I'm a developer advocate at Salesforce. In the previous episode, we introduced Agent Force vibes, rules, and workflows. In this episode, we're going to explore a number of basic tools from the Salesforce DX MCP server. You'll learn how to manage orgs, we'll interact with users, and we'll also work with metadata and data. Unlike the other episodes of this series, this video isn't broken down into distinct chapters per tool. Instead, we're going to follow the natural order of a real-life scenario where we'll use the different tools as we need them. For today's demo, we're going to spin up a scratch org with the eBikes sample app using Agent Force Vibes and the Salesforce DX MCP server tools. Before we start deploying the app, I need to show you our server's configuration. Make sure to watch episode number two of the series for more details about how to configure MCP servers. As I mentioned earlier, we're going to work with the orgs, users, metadata, and data toolset. Some of the tools of these toolsets aren't GA yet as of the time of recording, so we'll need to specify the allow non-GA tools flags in the server configuration to use them. Now that our configuration is ready, we can start deploying the sample app. We're going to follow the eBikes readme instructions, but instead of using the CLI, we're going to use Agent Force vibes. Note that I could write a single large prompt that does everything in one shot, but for the purpose of learning, we're going to split the operations in distinct prompts. The first thing we're going to do is that we're going to look at our connected orgs. This uses the list orgs MCP tool that calls Salesforce DX to list our orgs just like you would do by running SF org list with the Salesforce CLI. You'll notice that I have quite a few orgs, but I don't have an org to host eBikes at the moment, so we're going to create one. To create a scratch org, we need a dev hub. I've already set one as my default, but I need to make sure that Agent Force Vibes sees it. Now, I'm running this prompt explicitly, but the agent would ask me about the dev hub later if I didn't have it in my context. To identify the dev hub, the agent uses the get default username MCP tool. I'll auto approve this tool because it's perfectly safe to run at any time and it's quite frequent to use it. Now that the agent knows about our dev hub, let's go ahead and create our scratch org with this prompt. This uses the create scratch org tool and we'll spin up our scratch org. Now that my org is ready, let's deploy the project metadata to it. Now we use the deploy metadata tool with the default org and that's the scratch org that we just created. Next, we need to assign a permission set to the default user. So let's do it. This calls the assign permission set tool with the default user. There's one last thing that we need to do to finish the setup, that's creating sample data. Unfortunately, there's no MCP tool to do this at the time of the recording, but it doesn't mean that we're blocked. The good news is that we can use a prompt to tell the agent to use the CLI directly. Looks like our sample data was imported, but let's double check and we're going to run this run SQL query tool, which is safe to pre-approve as well because it's quite frequent. All right. Now that everything is ready, let's open the org in a browser with the open org tool and let's try it. Now I can get to the product explorer and check that the app works as expected which it does. We can work with our scratch org and when we no longer need it, we can delete it. And I confirm my request. Then I approve the delete org tool execution. And that's it, our scratch org is gone. That's it for today. You've learned about the basic tools of the Salesforce DX MCP server. We've deployed eBikes sample app by using the orgs, users, metadata, and data MCP tools. And in the next episode, we'll talk about how to enforce good security and quality with Agent Force vibes. Thanks for watching. I hope that you found this content useful. Make sure to like this video and to subscribe to our channel to get more content like this. See you in the next episode.